Hey guys, Alex here. Have any of you ever seen The Matrix? You know, that sci-fi thriller movie starring Keanu Reeves, aka the nicest man alive? Yeah, me neither. But I absolutely love that green hackery tech stuff that everyone sort of associates with the movie. So rather than simply sit down and watch it like any normal person would, I've decided to implement that stuff myself in Rust using the Piston Window Library. And then maybe I'll sit down and watch the movie. Now, a quick disclaimer, my project here is only inspired by the movie. I don't want to recreate the exact effect they had because that's just boring and, quite honestly, a little uncreative in my book. Also, apparently, the special effects guy just copied that text from his wife's sushi book. I don't have a wife, nor do I have a sushi book, so I can't exactly recreate all that. Oh well. Alright, first things first, we're going to open up a new directory and open it in Atom. Or, you know, any other text editor you guys like to use. And now I'm going to look up how to use the Piston Window Library because it's been a little bit of a while since I've used it. We're going to go ahead and copy this code here and then make it a little more my style. So yeah, I guess I'll go around, get rid of all the spaces, all the extra stuff that I don't like. I know a lot of you guys love your formatting with spaces, but uh, just, you know, try and bear with me for a minute here. And now uh, with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and download our cargo packages. And there we go, our first error in record time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change the tool chain here on Rust up to Nightly but I sort of forgot how to do that. Okay, I figured it out, and now we can download our Rust crates. Now, as I said before, it's been a little while since I've used Piston Window, so let's go ahead and double check the API real quick. Okay, next we're gonna implement our range struct and give us a way to randomly generate a whole bunch of them. So the rain here is actually, it's basically just going to be a vector of characters in Rust with some sort of position on the screen and a velocity. And you know, maybe also like an opacity I'm thinking, that might look good. So what's going to happen every time you have like an update event in this loop is each of the little rain strings is going to abandon what was at the top of it and then add a new random character to the bottom. And that'll look really cool as they start going down further and further. Okay, so here we're just going to call Piston's text drawing function. Uh, it takes in this weird like glyph set looking thing. I'm not entirely sure why they designed it like that, but you know, I think I can get behind it. Um, so what you have to do is you have to specify a TTF, like a font file path. And I've got just the thing for finding all of the font files on my computer. Okay, and with that, we're gonna debug it a little more, and we've got a black window. That's progress. But with a little more code, we can actually draw an A on the screen. Congratulations, A, you are the very first character to be drawn in this Matrix Rain program. Now we just have to look up randomization because I sort of forgot how to do it in Rust, so we can have dynamic placement of those rain strings. They don't move yet because we haven't implemented that, but it's looking better and better as we keep going on. Okay, so to get them to move, I'm gonna go ahead and add a random timeout for the string movement and implement a frame update event in the piston window handler. So this might take some trial and error. Okay, so the timers work, but we're getting a runtime error which is a pretty scary thing in Rust because, you know, it's designed to be very hard for you to get like compile time errors. So if there's a runtime error, your code is so bad that something slipped through the compiler. So you made a pretty big mistake somewhere, but let's see if we can't find it. So in Rust, if we set the right environment variable here, we can actually see the entire stack trace of the error. It looks like it's an index out of bounds and is coming from the reins next function, which is what tells it what's the next character you stack onto that range structure when you update it. So we're going to go ahead and fix that here. Ah, there we go. So it's starting to look a bit more like the matrix, but strings also sort of spawn halfway through the screen as you can see here. 
So let's just adjust our spawn position code. And last thing we're gonna do is randomize the characters that spawn in the string. So it's not just a bunch of A's or whatnot. So let's just make sure of a few things before we do that. Namely, we wanna see how to map characters from integers and Rust and which Unicode characters correspond to standard ASCII. Now I'm gonna pick a few numbers here just to make sure that we can get the ASCII stuff perfect. So I'm going to pick a random integer and it's going to be at least between 33 and like 126 because 32 is the ASCII for the space and I don't really want any like empty characters in the middle of the rain here. So I'm not gonna have anything space, but this way it'll get all the ASCII uppercase, lowercase characters and punctuation marks. I would go ahead and use any sort of Unicode thing and have like crazy Mandarin and Cyrillic characters and all that, but I don't know if our font file handles anything outside of ASCII and I am much too lazy to go check. So we're not gonna do that. So I implemented all that and there's this weird thing where it seems like only one ASCII character can ever get rendered on the screen. Uh, that's weird because I checked the font file and Russ says that there's a character for each number that I choose. So that's a little weird, but I'll get back to you guys when I figure out what's wrong. Okay, so I found out what's wrong. I forgot to call the flush function for that glyph set buffer thing in this one line of code here after I called the draw function. I guess I sort of missed that on the docs page when I was copying over a lot of this code. Oh well. I also continued to tweak the speeds and opacity and the other like fine-tuned detail settings and whatnot. So here's the final result. Pretty cool, huh? And with a measly few lines of Rust code, we can get this really cool, authentic looking matrix rain stuff using the piston window library. That's all I've got for this matrix code today. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, share, comment, or subscribe. You can also follow me on any of the social media listed in the description below. I have all the code from this project on my GitHub in the description, so you can all check it out if you want to dissect it or maybe, you know, change the colors, recreate it, however you see fit. If you'd like to continue watching, consider any of the videos around the screen here. I have quite a few on my channel, so if you like Rust or OCaml or Ruby or Python or any other language, I think I've got the one for you. If you have any cool movie effects you'd like to see recreated in a future video, just leave it in the comments below. Or any other project in general for that matter. Doesn't have to be movie effects. I like coding stuff that you guys want to see. That's pretty much all I've got here, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next week.